Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to explain how to process lumber that is beyond the capacity of your jointer, but within the capacity of your thickness planer. Now, if you're lucky, I happen to have a 16-inch jointer over there, so my planer is 20 inches. As long as the boards are under 16, I can accurately mill stock. But what I've got in front of me is a shaker bench. I've got two of them at home. I have to make three, two more. And the bench itself is a 16-inch wide piece which would be really close to the capacity of my jointer. Actually, I think it's 15 and 3 quarters. Well, if you don't joint the one face first and you send it through your thickness planer, the infeed rolls, which are the parts that pull the board into the thickness planer itself, will simply put enough pressure to flatten out your board. It'll plane the top, but then when it comes out the other end, it'll spring right back and you'll have a smooth cup board. So what you have to do is make that bottom side nice and flat so that it'll get transferred to the top side and then you'll have a smooth flat side and then you can flip it around and do the bottom side as well. Alright, so what are we going to do? First thing I'm going to do is going to go over to my jointer and I'm going to straighten an edge and I'm going to rip this down to within as close as I can get or as close as I dare get until I actually am ready to finish it. That measures 15 and 5 eighths so I'm going to go 15 and 3 quarter. No sense working more material than I have to. Now, there's a big uh, chunk out of here, so I'll work from this side. I'm doing this just to get a relatively edge that I can put against the fence on my table saw. down in here I want to get rid of, so I'm going to set that through again. In fact, I'm going to drop it down and make sure that you're done. Now, when I was making reference to the width, That edge is not perfectly square to this face because this face isn't flat and you have to have a flat face to put against the fence. So this is just going to be a rough dimension at first. So I'll take that, as I said, down to 15 and 7 eighths. check this against it. Okay, so you see how that, there's a bump in the middle, that pivots in the middle. Side to side is not terrible. But there's some twist in it. So, like I said, if I ran that through a thickness planer, I would just come out with a smooth twisted board. So I've got to come in here and fix that. Now, I'm going to show you a scrub plane. You have an option to buy in a new one. 
or you can pick up an old, here's an old Stanley. They're, uh, they're not uh, terribly complex. There are no moving parts. There's a lever cap that holds a big thick blade in place. I'll go through the process of sharpening. Some people are mystified by it because it has a curved edge, but it's not hard. In fact, this is a type of tool that doesn't need a really fine edge because of the nature of how it works. So I'm going to use a 1200 grit diamond plate. And I'm going to reference on that primary bevel and then come up off it a little bit. And I'm going to go in this corner. And while I'm doing these little circles, I'm going to roll around that edge until I can get a little burr all the way around. So find the primary bevel, come up a little bit, I'm on this corner, just start a little circle, and then as I'm doing these little circles, I'm slowly rolling around. Now I'm at this far side, and then I'll turn and go back. A little extra work. And I've got a bird that I can feel all the way. You can't use a ruler trick on this. You have to just lay that flat in order to get rid of the burr. I think this one is straight out of the box. I don't think I've ever done anything to it because I recently replaced it. So it's that close to being ready to go. Now, this goes in bevel down. It's got a big open throat so you can get uh, fairly heavy shaving coming out of there. And depending on how much material I have to remove, that'll determine how much blade I want to have exposed. And when I start, it's going to be fairly aggressive, so if you can see how much there is. Now we've got a spot where the problem is. And that's the part that gets a little trickier. It's always easier to work on the cup side. Here's why. If you work on the convex side, then you're essentially going to have to remove this entire center section to make that flat. If you work on the on the concave side, in this case the one I have on the bottom, then you do a lot less work just on the outside edges to get rid of those high edges and it'll sit flat. Okay, I know I've got a bump in the middle I need to get rid of. And when I pivot the board like this by pushing down here, I can see that there's a high spot right about here. And I'm going to work them one at a time. So I'm going to go right underneath here, flip this over, I'll put a bench dog in that I can work up against. I'm going to see if I can spot this just by sighting down the board. Okay, I can. I can see it right here. So I'm going to come in here with my plane. Now, it's not as bad a problem as I would have thought, so I'm going to take that in a little bit. Now, that's going the wrong way. So what I'll do is spin this around, just so that I'm not fighting the grain. Now don't go too crazy before you stop and check. There's no sense in making it worse in the opposite direction. Sure there isn't any debris in the bench that's going to interfere with what you're trying to determine. Okay, so I moved that pivot point. As you can see, if you look where it, where it wiggles, it's down into here, just in this back side. So, in a little bit more. Need a little more than that. You can use a jack plane. You can even modify a, a smooth plane. I like this just because of those characteristics I mentioned. It's got a big heavy blade that doesn't vibrate. It's got a big open throat. It also has a really large rear tote so you can get all four fingers around it, whereas most planes are designed for three fingers. The bottom three, the index finger points along. 
side of the frog. Okay, a lot less. Okay. And what I'm watching for is I'm just looking right along here and I want to see where it pivots. So it's back in here. Actually, it's just a continuation of this. bear down on that. I think I've got a lot of the twist on. Now I've just got I've got a bump front to back. Now that one's a lot more to deal with. And it appears it's right through here. So I'm going to assume that about 16 inches up from that end, I've got a high point, a high point going all the way across. Because there's no twist, then I can assume that this uh, this entire area through here is hot. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to hold this in with the bench dog. And you can attack, if, if the grain is really tearing on you bad, you can actually go across like this, which what you might call a controlled tear. It doesn't allow that blade to dig in quite so deep. You can also pull this grain. Give your arms a rest. Now I'm just going to spread that. I'm going to kind of feather out the uh, that hill. time. So I have to determine which is worse, the twist or the fact that I've got a pivot point that I've moved back to about here. And I think the, uh, I think the uh, twist is a little more severe. It looks to be right about there. And it's high here too. And I'll tackle this one first. where I ended. Now, don't want to touch anything down there until I check this one.
I still got it here. And I think I'll tackle this one. either because one little chip like that can throw it off and then you're chasing bumps that really don't exist just because of a piece of wood that was underneath. That looks a lot better but not perfect yet. Actually looks like it may be right here. Just a little bit of a high spot. But the reason I'm pulling my blade in is because as the uh, problem gets less and less, the solution has to become less and less. trying to get this surface smooth, I'm just getting it so that when I send it through the thickness planer, the thickness planer reads it as being flat and makes the opposite side flat and smooth. Oops. Okay, still got something. spot right here. Maybe just that. Okay, so now I'm looking at this end, and as I push on there, I can tell that my pivot point, if you look, watch right along there, and see where, where it moves. My pivot point is right underneath here, and I can tell by the way it's moving that it's right in this area, it's not down there anywhere. Where did I say? Right in here. This is just a little bit lower than the rest of the bench, so 
I don't want the corner of that board falling into that little area. I didn't realize how far out that was. Okay, we still got a pivot point here. I'm actually going to switch and use my, grab my number six. I'll set that on there and see if I can't spot. Right in through here. that problem now. See I don't like that pivot because that means you know that rocks end to end. Still see if we can find seems to be right out in the middle. I'm gonna use number six on this. And I'll do the same thing by just Dragging it like this, it might be actually right here. The nice thing about the longer plane is that it will reference off the high spots and uh, help you bring it down to one level. Still a little bit of movement, I can see that popping up. So when I pivot like this, I can see it's down somewhere in here. It may actually be getting close. You can do what I just did on your bench 
and it will burnish and show up the high spots. And you can see them if you look real close where it's pivoting. Now it's going to have a touch in numerous spots. So what you have to do to use that technique is you have to be very careful to look and see where the pivot point is. Wiggle the board on the bench and then just look for those spots that are in the area that's causing the, uh, the problem. So I'm going to just be quite straight through the middle section. If you've ever wondered why most cabinet makers benches are not very wide, you really can't comfortably plane much beyond about 16 inches. If you try reaching out there, it's pretty impossible. It'll worry you quick. Okay, that's it might be there. I'll give this one more good. Oh no, shoot. Like I said, you really gotta push down in order to spot it. Okay, so it's just this one. So something right underneath here. I assume it's that area right there. Pull that blade in a little bit. pretty good. I don't, there's no pivoting in the middle. I'm just going to go corner to corner now and just check it one more time. Okay, I, I think I can live with that for a bench. Now, flip that over. eyeball that, if I could get the camera in position, that looks pretty flat. Let's run it through the thickness planer real quick and just see what we end up with.
there. Uh, I'm not sure how long that took us, but it's worth it. Now I can go ahead and make my bench. Everything will be nice and flat, especially a bench like this where the seat itself is the meat of the whole thing. The legs are just stuck in four corners of the board, so if that is twisted, that thing's always going to rock. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. If you're not afraid of a little bit of work, pick up a scrub plane, a couple of stones, learn how to sharpen, and then increase your capacity. See you.